Hey guys, welcome to The Homestead. So today we're going to talk about chickens. Uh, I did a video uh, just a few days ago talking about how this whole Pennsylvania town is following the directive of the Pennsylvania Department of Health. And they suggest, you know, maybe limiting your chickens if your town has a rodent problem. The problem may lie with the amount of people in your town, in your fair city, who own chickens because those dastardly deeds need not go unpunished. And so they're talking about different ordinances that may limit your liberty and freedom to produce your own butt nuggets. <sighs> Absolute insanity. And this is spreading throughout America. However, there is some good news here. Before we get into some of the comments, there's good news because there's a lot of towns out there, liberty-minded towns, towns that love the idea of freedom. And they're actually passing ordinances that allow townspeople to keep chickens and to allow them to have uh, the ability to produce food on uh, even on small lots within towns, if, if it does, if, you know, if it's done correctly, I understand that there has to be rules in life. I'm not some sort of anarchist, but you know, to say, you know, what you can't ever do this, you can't ever do that, and to take away, the, especially in the times we're getting ready to head into, where food is only going up in price. Guys, it's okay for you to be able to make some eggs. It's not going to be the end of society as we know it. If you allow the most populated bird on planet Earth, the chicken, you know, to roost in your backyard and to produce eggs for you and your family. Now, so there are a lot of towns out there doing the right thing. However, there's still a bunch of <laughs> ninnies out there, Nancy's, Karen's, whatever, that love to lord over people like you and me. So in that video where I talked about Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania towns trying to ban the chicken, the most populated bird on earth, um, there were a number of people who replied to my comments about how chickens will normally run down rodents, mice, and rats and devour them, eat them. They're like little raptors. And you're like, my, my chickens don't do that. But there was a lot of you. I would say about three-fourths of the comments who commented on that topic itself said, yeah, my chickens will run down a mouse all the time. Or rat. Or, you know, they, they, they take care of the rodents because if they're scavengers, they are like little raptors. So I'd say about three-fourths of the people who commented in that regard of that specific topic agreed with me. Now, there was about a fourth of you who left comments, well, my chickens don't do that. My chickens must be lazy. Let's read, a, let's read one of the comments. This is from My Light of Hope. I just saw a mouse tonight in my broody hen's nest and it ran right by her and I was surprised that she just sat there and didn't try to at least peck at it. I think mine might be lazy because it isn't the first time I've seen mice in my chicken housing. Laugh out loud. Your chickens might be lazy and you might be feeding them too much. So I did a video uh, on, it was, seems to be pretty popular over at uh, my Patreon, okay? Patreon.com slash an American homestead. You can find links below. One of the videos I did not that long ago was how to feed your chickens post collapse. What are you going to do if you can't go to Tractor Supply or whatever co-op or feed store that you go to to buy chicken feed for your chickens? Okay, what are you going to do? How are you going to feed them if you can't do that anymore? There's really easy ways to feed chickens. Chickens are not that hard to keep. And this is one of the reasons why you have people like Joel Salatin, who've become very, very popular and other, you know, YouTubers out there and, and, and content creators who, who have become very, very popular talking just about chickens, because this is the entry level drug to getting into homesteading, to first becoming a producer. You can produce meat, you can produce eggs. You can, it's, it's an amazing production that's, for the most part, pretty low maintenance, especially if you know what you're doing. Now, on our homestead, Tim, he has been, you know, raising birds for years. He's done quail, he's done chickens, off and on throughout his life, and so he has a lot of experience, and so we have learned a great amount from him, but, you know, it's through trial and error that he has learned. One of the things you cannot do with chickens is overfeed them. You can't, listen, it's like anything. If you put something or somebody on welfare and never make them work for anything, they won't work. It's that simple. So it comes like that with chickens, with, with, with cats. There is a couple people who left the same thing about cats. If you, if you overfeed your cat, you give it food whenever it wants and lots of it and good food, 
if it sees a mouse run across the, the there's no instinct there. It, it, it doesn't matter. Because, like, why do I gotta chase that thing down? A hungry lion hunts best, know what I mean? That's what you need. You need to keep them hungry and not starving, but allow them to go out and do what is the instinct, what is built into them. A cat is meant to hunt, but if you overfeed your cat, it's not gonna. Dear Diary, my food dish is now only half full. It is obvious that I will soon starve to death. I have repeatedly tried to draw attention to my predicament with the authorities, but they are clearly either stupid, deaf, or just cruel. This may be my last entry. And then if you overfeed your chickens, they're not going to go around and scratch. And, and, and Chickens will eat anything. They will eat kitchen scraps, you know, meat scraps, bread scraps. They'll eat the, the, the county tax assessor when he shows up every once in a while. Just it, They'll eat anything. So it's like Keep in mind, if you overfeed your chickens, if you're feeding them too much, number one, when it comes time to, you know, tighten that belt, you're going to have problems. It's going to be hard for them and you because you're going to be frustrated. Why is there no production going on right now? How come my chickens are unhappy? How come they're not, they're not producing like they used to? Well, it's because you've overfed them for far too long. And now that you've tightened the belt because you had to because of the economy or whatever reason, you know. The reality is, in that video I did over at patreon.com slash American Homestead, link in the description below, how to feed your chickens post-collapse. There's a reason why this is the most populated bird on earth. You as an American are filthy stinking rich. You have the ability just to go down to the store and pick up a big old bag of feed. Most of the world does not have that ability. They don't enjoy that luxury. So understand where I'm coming from here, guys. You have the most populated bird on, on planet Earth, and it has the ability, for the most part, to feed itself. There are plenty, and we did a video on this before, there are plenty of rural chicken populations, even in major U.S. cities, that run, they run feral. And, and uh, did I say rural per chicken? <laughs> feral chicken populations. They just run everywhere. And they, they find their own food. Because there's plenty of food to be had if you're a chicken. <laughs> you don't need to go broke feeding your chickens. They will feed themselves for the most part. They'll do just fine. And so, you know, watch that video over at Patreon. If you're a patron, if you're not a patron, go over and join. You can join for as little as a dollar a month and get access to that video. You can go to my website, AmericanHomestead.com, and up at the patron link, up in that main menu, you can find that video. It's a very helpful video. I give you a number of ways to feed your chickens post-collapse. But the number one reason is it's not that hard to feed chickens, okay? A little bit, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and some, a little bit of pre-planning, and you can make this happen and still keep up your production. Here's the deal. If you see a mouse run across your chicken coop and the chickens are like, huh, look at that, they're, they're too full. You're feeding them too much. It, it's as simple as that. Uh, I have seen chickens rip mice from, you know, just shred a mouse. <laughs> we, we were butchering um, some sheep the other day, some rams, and um, Ramses the third is like one of our rams. <laughs> the great Ramses the third fell to the, uh, the butcher's knife the other day. And um, as I was uh, cutting him up and piecing him out, uh, I, I pulled out the liver and I cut a chunk off the liver. And I said, Caleb, go take this piece of liver over to the chicken coop. And um, he did. And I asked him, I don't know, about 15, 20 minutes later, hey, how much of that liver's left over there? He went over and checked. He's like, not a piece. It's all gone. <laughs> because they will devour that stuff. And, you know, as, as, as I'm butchering this sheet, this ram, um, throwing out pieces of fat and stuff like that and, and glands or whatever, stuff I don't want to keep. I keep a lot. But, you know, there's stuff that goes to the chickens. And the chickens, want, a hen will come by, catch that piece of whatever I've thrown out, and then run. And all the, all the hens are running after her. Because they want a piece of that too. If if they don't do that sort of thing, you're feeding them too much. What do you think? Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, a hungry lion hunts best, as Ernest, Ernest once said. So, love to hear your thoughts. Hey, check out our merchandise over at teespring.com. You can find our some of our best-selling shirts. Stupid Shit Hurt is our best-selling shirt. Because if we had more hurt in this world, we'd have an awful, awful lot less people trying to take away your chickens. And then also our Farm Fresh Butt Nuggets. You can find that over at Teespring also. And speaking events, I will be going to a number of speaking events coming up this summer. 
And if you see me at one of these events, chances are I will have these shirts on hand. Uh, these are a top seller too. People love these shirts. They're very funny. Always conversation starters, especially amongst chicken owners. So pick up these shirts either at teespring.com or if you see me at a speaking event coming up soon. Also over at Patreon, we are going to be getting into the Gorilla's Guide to the Baofeng Radio. We're going to be we're doing a series on on communications, radio communications. Uh, coming up, and uh, we've already started that series, and we're going to be doing another one uh, video coming up here soon on what to expect post collapse when it comes to radio communications. And we're going to be getting into. I'm going to be recommending this. Uh, it's a very short book. It's not that big. It's by NC Scout. You can find it on Amazon. The Gorilla's Guide to the Baofeng Radio. Check this out. Great, fantastic book. I highly, highly recommend it. Whether you have a ham license or not, and then also over at Patreon.com, we're giving away these herbal extract books. It's called. Uh, it's it's the third edition actually of this version of this book, that was written back in the 1800s, and then last was in print around the 1980s and 1990s. Uh, but if you buy these books on Amazon, they're going to cost you a thought like $800 for one, almost $1,000 for the other. And the reason they're so expensive is because of the valuable information contained within. If you like making tinctures, that's great. There's lots of videos out there that show you how to make tinctures. These books tell you what to do with the tinctures and why you're making the tinctures. Very, very valuable information that the pharmaceutical companies would rather you just forgot about. All right, I'll leave it at that. See you next time at the Homestead. Bye. Have you ever gone to a health food store and seen all those small bottles of probiotics in your cooler section? Man, can they be pricey. Are you really getting all you need to improve your gut health from those expensive bottles? How viable are they? Most of those products claim to give you between 8 and 15 strains of gut healthy healing bacteria. Think of each strain of bacteria as a different factory in your gut. Each factory is responsible for breaking down that food in its own way. The more factories you have, the more the food is broken down and the easier the food is absorbed and digested by the body. A 2018 study published by the National Library of Medicine shows that one fermented head of cabbage can produce up to 114 strains of beneficial bacteria. That's a lot more food factories than you're getting from that expensive pill bottle. And that's just cabbage. Imagine the probiotics when you add garlic, onions, pepper, and more to that ferment. PerfectPickler.com and its home fermentation kits provide you with everything you need to get started making your own gut healthy food factories from the comfort of your own kitchen. PerfectPickler.com even provides a jam packed recipe book with many of our kits. Visit PerfectPickler.com and start fermenting your own veggies to begin your journey to better gut health. That's PerfectPickler.com. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>